Hey guys, Pablo with BND, and today on Top Reddit Post, we actually gonna have a special edition, and it's a special video. The reason for that is what the story is about. So that story is on malicious compliance, but it has more to do with tolerance and doing what it's supposed to be done. And I really felt that this story needed its own space, so let's hear it. His name was Charles. Edits at the bottom. This happened to me circa 2004. Warning, this story is not funny. Malicious compliance of a different color. Changed my life for the better. Still give me chills. Work at McDonald's drive through No speaker. Two order windows and a third pickup window. Charles is working window one. I'm working window two. Charles Black, rip, tall, huge. Has prison tats all down his arms. Somewhere between half an ounce or two of fat in his body. Picture Terry Crews with darker skin and black tats to the wrist. Charles is equal parts charming, soft-spoken, humble and ambitious. He knew where he had been and was determined to change his life. Probably one of the best men I've ever met. Enter Green Minivan. We had both taken orders at the same time and mine was long gone. Charles' order was taken forever. Probably 4 minutes just taking the order before payment. I come over to check on Charles. Before I get close, I notice he's blocking the frame of the window so I can't hear anything. It's an awkward position for him and blandly obvious. He moves his hand out to me, out of sight of the van and gives me the stop sign. Back off. Got it. Time passes. Manager on duty comes out to check the issue. He waves her off. She protests, I tell her to wait and see. Something's deeply wrong. Suddenly, Charles points the van down to the other window and leaps into action. Slams the window, shoves past us without a word and races to the third window. Manager and I look at each other, check for other cars, none, then follow at a distance. Manager had been running the order, but Charles took over and personally handled every part of the order with the speed of a madman, quality of a five-star restaurant. He grabs a new batch of fries, he has a cook triple check each burger. He breaks the cardinal rule of the store and shows the van all the kids' meal toys we have for personal preference. Drinks and condiments are handed out and Charles gives them a genuine smile and enthusiastically thanks them for being customers. Have a great night, we'll see you soon. Charles waits until they're out of sight before returning from the window and visibly shaken, walks back to his register. Manager starts to fuss about an explanation she's on but Charles just says he can't yet. His legendary Zencom is severely damaged. After a few minutes to get a drink, wipe the sweat off his face and compose himself, he opens up. Van had rolled up. Charles had greeted Dan with the usual, Welcome to McDonald's, what can I get for you this evening? And his winning smile. White father driving waits for Charles to finish and with a loud sneer had turned to the wife and for all to hear said, You order, hun. I don't wanna talk to this black guy. Wife turns to the two young kids, probably 8 and 10, impressionable, learning, watching. They had locked eyes on Charles. They'd seen his stats. They'd listened to the hateful authorizing of the deuce people from birth. Charles decided that he had with him to reach for something better. Father be damned, he's long gone. Charles decided that he had a message for those boys. The wife patiently and shipsly took this cruciatingly and needlessly complicated order from the father and then had to speak past him to Charles. Same for the kids. Light mustard, three pickles, etc. Perfectionism. Charles reached down inside himself for something that neither I nor the manager possessed and he gave the wife a genuine smile as he whipped out the order. The father knew he had been served the dish he thought impossible to serve. It was served with kindness and compassion and a compliance that defied everything he told them about those people. The kids both waved to Charles from the back of the van as the father pulled away. They liked their new friend. Added, wow, I'm deeply honored with the response this got. I was thinking a few hundred might see it and say it was neat. 
Thank you for the gold. I'm honored to be a witness to what Charles did and to honor his story. It really happened sometime between 2002 and 2004 in Arlington, Texas. The dates are fuzzy because I was a dorky college kid, 17, 18, and was dealing with lots of other issues at the time. Here's a Google Street View from 2008 that shows the store as it was. The layout was weird. Window 1, Charles Register for ordering, was facing west. Window 2, dork college kid, me, Register, farther down the curve, off the building, faced the southwest. Window 3, pick up food and drinks, facing south. For those who have asked what makes this malicious compliance, I've had 15 years to think it through all. 1. The stated intent was for Charles to be forced to serve them in a degrading and humiliating manner. The spirit of the order was goading and bathing Charles with an impossible task. Racist, douchebag father wanted Charles to slam the window in his face. Simply doing his job was a slap in the face of the request. Ergo, malicious compliance. Douchebag father had thought he was clever by making his reprehensible statement. What he'd also done was write a check that his wife was forced to cash. Douchebag father wouldn't dare sully himself by dying to speak with one of them, but he'd order his wife to do his dirty work. By taking the order, Charles was humiliating the douchebag father and allowing the douchebag, the man, to debase his own wife in front of him. By dragging the order out, to make sure we get it right, he made the wife add insult to injury by repeating things from the douchebag to her, to Charles, and then back again. In my mind's eye, I can picture Charles staring very intently at a sweaty, greasy douchebag as Charles holds his hands out waiting for payment. I can imagine Charles gently holding her hand more inches from the douchebag's face and then placing the change back in hers. You won't talk to me, therefore... You have to watch as I touch your wife with my hands right in front of your children. The last part of the order was also the most crucial. If any part of it had been less imperfect, the magic would be lost. Charles made sure that nobody else handled anything for them. He was responsible for everything being perfect. That's why he hustled. The order was made excellent by Charles doing all the work. You hate black people, yet... Every bite of this meal is going to be the best meal we've ever had here because I made it better. The douchebag drove off with his tail so tucked it must be hurt. His wife had been dragged through the mud by his own demands, some black guy had made friends with his own children, and the coals from Charles' fire had been hipped into his head. Again, all in front of his own family because of his idea of being snarky or funny and racist. I wish I knew where Charles was or what happened to him. I love the idea of seeing where those boys went and what impact he had on their terrible childhoods. This is Reddit though. Arlington, Texas, 2002 to 2004. Charles from McDonald's on Matlock and Sublet. Added 2. I mentioned Charles explained to the manager payout what had actually happened in the comment and included it here for closure. I left out the manager's reaction afterwards. She freaked out on him and demanded to know why he did that when she was supposed to slam the window in the dad's face. He was still cooling off with a drink but stood up to his full height and stared her down. He's like 6'3", she was 4'11", and suddenly felt her size. That's when he explained that what he did wasn't for Charles, her, me, the dad, or even that poor woman he's got speaking for him. It was for the boys in the back and ending ignorance with him. If I had responded with anger, I'd have proved him right and he could turn to Dan and say, See, they're nothing but angry black people. I gave Dan a message. I might be the first black man to ever show them something better. Severely paraphrased from 14 to 15 years ago, but that whole thing is seared into me. Well, guys, you know, over 50 years ago, there was a great man that actually preached the same thing Charles actually did. For me, having been born in Brazil, even as an American, I was stationed in the South while in the Army. And I'll tell you, yeah, some people were douchebags. But one thing I learned is, the moment you don't actually get to their level, they don't have anything to say. You know, this guy says he would really want to know where Charles is. I'll be honest, 
I wish I knew where Charles was as well. Charles, if you're out there, thank you. Thank you for showing people tolerance. And, you know, I just hope you guys enjoyed that. That's just a bonus for today. I'll be coming out with another video later today. A little more into malicious compliance. But I felt that story fitted on its own video. Separated from all the other douchebags of the world. I hope you guys liked and I hope you guys learned something from it too. And you know the whole story. You know, subscribe if you guys want. Leave a comment if you can. Give me an up or down vote. It's all good. Today's a good day. I feel really good about reading this story. You guys have a great day. I'll see you later.